Today, I'm gonna to test all these devices with the Hollyland Lark M2 to see what kind of quality we can get from this microphone. I will have the chapters marked out below. That way you can skip right to what you need or you can listen through to get an idea of all the different devices. And if you stick around to the end, I'll tell you everything I love about the mic as well as one big con that I really don't like. For the testing parameters, I'm gonna use the same settings for each of the devices, uh, which are the manufacturer's recommended settings which is to turn the volume in the device, the recording volume, down to as low as it'll go. Uh, not zero, it does have to register some sound, of course, but to one or whatever your corresponding device's lowest setting is. And then you turn the receiver, if it's the camera version, to middle volume. Now for this version, uh, which is the USB-C, uh, you can see it there. For this version, um, they don't have any settings. I think there may be a phone app that you can use. I haven't got that far into it yet, but for the camera version, we're gonna use those settings. For this, we're just gonna plug and play. So up first is gonna be my Canon C200. I have the receiver on top of the camera, plugged into the mic jack, and follow the manufacturer's settings. I'm gonna read a couple of statements here, and then I'm gonna change my mic position, and gonna do it again. Phrase one. The swan dive was far short of perfect. Phrase two. Two blue fish swam in the tank. I'm gonna test it again. Oh. I'm gonna test it again by holding the mic. I know I've seen a lot of people on social media and on YouTube holding uh, the you know the little DJI mics or even something like this, like this. So you got your headphone cord, whatever it is. I've seen people doing it, so I'm gonna test it for you guys just so you can know what it sounds like with this particular device. See, there's the just so you can see it. That's what the that's the transmitter, right? Transmitter, and you can probably hear me from there, okay? But that's the transmitter. It's right there, very tiny. Phrase one. The swan dive was far short of perfect. Phrase two. Two blue fish swam in the tank. I'm not sure if I'm holding it like this. I know I can kind of feel the my breath uh, hitting the mic. If there's going to be like plosives or S sounds or whatever. It does come with the dead cat. I don't have it on right now. Um, but of course that is an option if you're getting a little bit too much uh, wind noise in this device. Up next, we're going to test my overhead camera, which is right up here. It's the Olympus EM1 Mark II. Now to note, you may be able to hear my refrigerator running or the AC or something like that. My family's upstairs. Um, I am in my kitchen, so just keep that in mind when you're listening through this audio that this is real life testing. I don't have a soundproof room or whatever you call them, sound treated room, uh, to test these things in. I could go in my closet. That would look weird on film. So I'm just going to do it this way. And you're going to hear that audio now. Now this is the audio from my overhead camera, which is the Olympus EM1 Mark II. I'm going to go through, read the same phrases. I have the same settings. And then I'm going to change my mic position, hold it again, and just so we can compare those sounds. Phrase one. The swan dive was far short of perfect. Phrase two. Two blue fish swam in the tank. Now, I don't know how that's sounding. We can see, you know, once I uh, start editing it, of course, I'll know and we'll know when we watch it. Phrase one. The swan dive was far short of perfect. Phrase two. Two blue fish swam in the tank. And again, this was the Olympus EM1 Mark II straight into the camera, receiver, headphone jack, straight out of the box. Up next, we're going to do the Canon G7X Mark III. So you can see that I'm holding the Canon G7X Mark III right here. So all the audio you're hearing is actually coming from this recording. So I'm going to go through and say the same phrases. And I'm going to change my mic position and go through it again. Phrase one. The swan dive was far short of perfect. Phrase two. Two blue fish swam in the tank. So we'll see how that sounds. I'm going to put this down right there on top of that. Okay, I'm going to grab this, pull it right off of there, and then I'm going to hold this mic position, do the same too. And again, this is on the Canon G7X Mark III. Phrase one, the swan dive was far short of perfect. Phrase two, two blue fish swam in the tank. This is the Tascam DR10L. It actually has a more secure fit in here than I thought it would. Uh, and then so I've got the receiver, the Tascam, plugged right in just like that. We're going to test these same two phrases. I'm going to hold the mic and then we'll do them again. Phrase one, the swan dive was far short of perfect. Phrase two, two blue fish swam in the tank. All right, now I'm going to hold it. Phrase one, 
The swan dive was far short of perfect. Phrase two, two blue fish swam in the tank. All right, so there you have it. That's the Tascam DR-10L. I do use this thing a lot at weddings um, and sometimes even at interviews if it's not really a formal setup where you'd want a boom mic overhead. Um, but at weddings, you can throw it on someone's suit, let it record. And the thing I like about it is there's no risk of interference because it records to the device itself. And I've been to a lot of weddings where there was some bad interference, especially at indoor venues with wireless mic systems. That's one thing I really like about that Tascam. Um, but coming up next is going to be my iPhone 15 Pro. Um, of course, you guys heard a sound test of that on the other video, but it, this, I think, is a little more scientific, although not very scientific at all. Let's test it out. All right, so now what you're hearing is from my iPhone 15 Pro. Now, interesting to note is this has the USB-C receiver as opposed to the standard receiver for the camera system that uses that 3.5 millimeter headphone jack type size. Um, but yeah, this is the USB-C adapter uh, that comes with the combo kit. I'm going to go through the same two phrases. Phrase one, the swan dive was far short of perfect. Phrase two, two blue fish swam in the tank. Then I'm going to go ahead and hold it. Right here, the swan dive was far short of perfect. Two blue fish swam in the tank. I'm really curious to see if there's any difference between that USB-C version and the camera version that uses the 3.5 millimeter cord right there. Up next on the test, I'm going to record straight into my Windows laptop. Uh, this thing is not the newest laptop, but it's worked very well for me uh, and using it for DaVinci Resolve mainly. It's fast, still works great. This is the the ROG G14, I believe, is which one this is. It's ROG G something. So next, we're going to go ahead and get into that and let you hear that. All right, so now we're listening to the audio from uh, ROG Zephyrus G14. Uh, so what I've done is went into DaVinci Resolve into the Fairlight tab, started a voice recording, and that's what you're hearing right now. I'm going to go through, do the same two phrases, and then I'm going to switch over to the MacBook and do the same thing. Now, interesting to note, the 3.5 millimeter jack cord does not work with either the PC laptop or the MacBook Air. Uh, I have to use the USB-C receiver into the side of the laptop, which then picks up the audio, as you can hear probably right now. Um, this is what it sounds like. I'm going to do our two phrases. No, change my mic position. Do them again. Phrase one. The swan dive was far short of perfect. Phrase two, two blue fish swam in the tank. All right. Now, as you can see, I'm holding a receiver and I'm going to go through these same two phrases. Phrase one, the swan dive was far short of perfect. Phrase two, two blue fish swam in the tank. All right. That again was the ROG Zephyrus G14. Now we're going to switch on over to the MacBook Air and see how the difference sounds there. All right. So now you're hearing my MacBook Air. I'm going to go through, read the same phrases, do the same test. Uh, again, this is with the USB-C receiver. The 3.5 millimeter jack will not work with this. Uh, I tried it and there was no, no luck there. So, phrase one, the swan dive was far short of perfect. Phrase two, two blue fish swam in the tank. I'm going to go ahead and pull this off, do that last one. Phrase one, the swan dive was far short of perfect. Phrase two, two blue fish swam in the tank. All right, so now you have an idea of all these different devices, how they sound going directly into the device, however you may want to use them. Uh, so all in all, I really, really like the Hollyland Larkin 2 mic system, but you've got a sense now of the quality. The things I like are that it comes with two transmitters uh, that charge in the case, good battery life, it comes with the receiver and everything's paired straight from the factory which I think is a, a nice touch, just so I don't have to mess with that, because you know, pairing Bluetooth stuff can sometimes be annoying. Um, comes with a charging case. It has great distance uh, so far, and the sound quality, I couldn't be happier. I love being able to throw it on with a magnet and run around and do my videos. Um, yeah, so I really like almost every single thing about this. But the biggest con to the Hollyland Lark M2 mic system is that there's no onboard recording. That's one thing with the DJI Mic 2s that you do get that I think is very cool is that it records to the device locally as well as to the receiver and to the camera. Now that's, it's always so nice to have like a redundancy or a backup option when you're doing audio for video, especially professionally. Um, 
So the fact that these don't have a local option, which I'm sure is because they're so tiny. I mean, look at that thing. They probably just can't fit it in there yet. Um, but the fact that they don't have the local option is a bummer. That would lead me to say on a professional shoot, still you're gonna wanna have redundancies in place. Um, if you're doing some kind of shoot with this for money, uh, definitely, definitely record more than one source. But for things like YouTube, uh, for a vlog, for personal videos, whatever it might be, uh, I think they work great. And if you're doing it professionally, I think they still work great, but also have a redundant, uh, a redundant system. Uh, let me know what you think. Is there a device that you thought sounded the best? What do you think of the device overall? Is there anything else that we need to test about the Highland Lark M2? Just let me know in the comments. I appreciate all the, the love so far. And of course, if you feel like it's worth a subscription, definitely do that. Uh, not a lot have so far, but soon enough they will. They will. Anyway, I appreciate you stopping by and hanging out with me for a minute and watching my comprehensive audio test of the Hollyland Mark M2.